problems are some of the most common problems parents face with their kids. You may wonder about how to get your child to sleep through the night, so how can you help them develop good sleeping habits that will last a lifetime? Joining me to talk about this is Nancy Cupolo, owner and consultant for Children First. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for the opportunity to be here. So how can we help our children develop better sleeping habits? Well, I think it begins in early infancy. So many times we tend to want to soothe the child rather than have the child soothe themselves. One of the very first things that we can do is if a child wakes in the middle of the night, you may want to go in and just assess the situation before you pick them up. Perhaps it's just a, a night waking that infants often do, approximately every hour. And I might go in and just simply refer them back to their favorite blanket or perhaps something favorite that's in the crib with them. And the child will then use that to self-soothe and often return to sleep. Once you've done that a few times, you'll find that the child will wake in the middle of the night and instead of calling out for you, will actually look for that object or that favorite piece of blanket and cover themselves up and actually go back to sleep. And children have done this as early as 12 months of age. Oh, wow. We're talking about newborns, younger age. How about when they become older and if they still have, if they're waking up throughout the night, uh, going to the bathroom and then going back to bed, waking up throughout the night, what's going on? Well, I think it's important first and foremost always to make sure when we see any repetitive behavior in a child that we talk with our pediatrician. I'm not a diagnostician. I know that children have night waking, which is normal for children, but they also could have sleepwalking. Sleepwalking can occur with the child fully awake or appearing to be so with their eyes open and sleep talking. They can actually engage in conversations, but they have no idea what they're doing. So first and foremost, I want to rule out that it's not any physical condition. That being said, the second thing would be, is it attention seeking? Is the child able to go back and self-soothe but chooses not to, perhaps because they're competing with the attention of younger siblings? What I might do in that particular case is redirect the child back to bed without speaking to them at all. Without speaking at all? At all, because that reinforces the fact that they're up in the middle of the night. So if they're trying to get attention from you, then yes. they're really getting it that way. Yes, exactly. Okay. And once they're in bed, then I talk with them and say, Mommy's so happy, Dad's so happy that you're in your own bed. I love you very much as I tuck them in securely. Another technique might be to purchase an alarm clock, even as young as two years of age. Children can set their alarm clock and we say, when the alarm clock is quiet, we stay in bed. And when the alarm clock goes off, that's when we get up in the morning. And it signals the end and beginning of times for children because sometimes they don't understand time concepts like we do in the adult world. So those would be some of the strategies that and I would should, recommend. Should we also explain to them, especially if they're two, I'm sure they don't really understand time. So should we say, okay, when the clock has uh, eight, zero, zero, I mean, should we do that, break it down like that to them? Or just so when you hear it, then you get up? I usually just say when you hear it, you get up. The child at six acquires the concept of time and is beginning to tell time, and that would be appropriate to talk about hours and minutes and so on. But the younger child, no, not necessarily. I wouldn't necessarily do that. I would just say when the alarm clock goes off, we get up, and when it's quiet, we go to sleep. Sometimes a fan humming in the room is also a very peaceful sound to a child. Music playing may be too much of a stimulant to a child, depending upon the child's temperament and personality, but a humming fan will also reassure them the, the uh, comfort of the night for them as well. Uh, the other thing that I might do is follow a consistent bedtime routine. Okay. I think it's really important that we always, first we get our drink of water, then we get our pajamas on, then we read a book, and then it's time for you to sleep. To sleep. And that works. And that works. Okay. Thank you so much, Nancy. You're welcome. And if you have a question for Nancy, or if you have any other questions about the topic, log on to my website, parentologywithpaula.com.